you see her right now? She normally doesn't come in here when I live stream because she's like, ugh, mom, you're so boring. Because like, I'm just sitting here in front of like a really bright light <laughs> and talking and I'm never talking to her. And when she comes in here when I'm recording my podcast, she likes to do that. Like she starts getting like super licky with her tongue and making all these noise and huffing and puffing, which is like not ideal when you're recording a podcast, right? Also, my podcast is on hold right now because I'm trying to switch over. I am not loving Anchor, which is the platform I use. They're not sharing my podcast to Apple. And this has been going on for three years now. So I am working on that. So it's paused. Hey, 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 what up, Chris? Um, so anyway, morning and night routines. I have had so many people lately, like in my personal life, in the groups that I'm in, in my coaching, this is something that across the board, across the board, people are having issues with. And what's so ironic to me is that if you don't have a good morning routine, if you don't have an effective nightly routine, you're not good and you're not effective as a human being. Just like literally it doesn't matter who you are, you will not be effective. So what you need to do is make sure that you have created a nightly routine, have created a morning routine that is working for you. And it's sad to me that so many people feel so lost when creating these because it just means that we are continuing with our current education system to fail how we're teaching people. We don't teach well-being. We don't teach how to be happy. We don't teach wealth consciousness. We don't teach you how to create healthy habits in your mind and your body and your spirit. And that is why we're seeing so many people who have anxiety, depression, people who have insomnia because they can't sleep. It's mostly because you're watching your damn television and you're watching horror on your television or you're on your phone all the time or those people that are just crazy anxious all the time, look at how much they're on their phone. It's like all the time, all the time. I watched the documentary on YouTube for Paris Hilton, which is truly not something that I would typically watch, let's be honest. Um, but somebody had recommended and said that, wow, she had really changed and it was super powerful. And I can't remember who this person was. I actually think I stopped following them after this because that was the most BS comment I've ever heard. Um, Paris Hilton is the prime example of someone who is trying to be a billionaire. The fact that she's not a billionaire by now absolutely is just shocking to me like you're doing something absolutely wrong but the fact that she's constantly constantly on her phone and then gets like three hours of sleep at night not because she doesn't have enough time to sleep it's because she doesn't have healthy habits and she doesn't ever ground herself she's connected constantly and that is so unhealthy it is so unnatural for so many reasons so if someone like that who has all of the resources to be able to be healthy, to have the money to pay for coaches, to be able to eat the food she needs to eat, to be able to create a morning routine so that she can wake up in the morning and be an effective person and not grab her phone or so that she can go to sleep like at all because it doesn't look like that girl ever sleeps. So it just shows me if someone that has the means, all of the means, they have what most people would say the life, but that's not the life. Who wants to be rich, like so rich that some people would give anything to have that much money and they are not happy. That's not, that's not a good life. You need to have well-being and you need to be healthy, happy, and wealthy. Like all of these, that's my personal affirmation. I am healthy, happy, and wealthy. I say that, I can't even tell you how many times a day I say that. That is my personal affirmation. If I have a moment where I'm like, nothing's going on, I will be saying that to myself. 
And that just shows me if someone who has the means to everything is suffering with these issues, then of course, of course people who grew up in the middle class or lower middle class or even rich, because point proven, they don't have the key to success. Success, sustainable success, is not just making a lot of money. If you're making a lot of money and you don't actually enjoy your life, what is the point? You know, you really need to have it all. And that's why I teach a foundational approach. Now, understand that everyone's morning routine and everyone's nightly routine is gonna vary a little bit. I always like to say, I'm a single dog mom. My routine is going to be dramatically different than a mother of three who lives with her husband. That's just the way it is. And every human is different, right? So we can't expect that there's going to be seven things that you do in the morning and everyone's good to go and seven things that you do at night and everyone's good to go. That's not the case. Everyone's different. We're all humans. So what you have to realize are there are essentials. There are things that whether it's morning or night, doesn't matter if you're a human being, male or female in America or male or female in India. Honestly, there are some essentials that you need. Everyone needs because we are human beings. So at the core level of the fact that we are the same, we do have similarities. And I would like to like just point out that we have more similarities than oftentimes differences, but we live in a society that likes to segregate people and likes to point out differences because then we can we can judge people and we can put names to it and we can feel better about ourselves, but not really. So I want to teach you what you need to do because this is what I teach to my clients. Like if you go through coaching with me, I will be teaching you about a morning routine because honestly, you will not have the transformations that you're looking for, that I'm looking for, unless you're doing this. You can't be an effective human being if you don't have an effective morning routine and an effective nightly routine. I can say that till I'm red or blue in the face. That's the right term. Um, Either way, whatever color my face is, I can keep saying that and I know that there's so many people that aren't actually hearing it. And repetition is the key to learning. You have to hear things over and over again for your brain to really make sense of it, especially when it's something that you're not familiar with or you didn't grow up hearing. So, morning routine. Regardless of who you are, where you are, if you are a human, you have to have a morning routine because when you have a morning routine, it gets you into a state of creation and it takes you out of a state of reaction. Now, if you're in a state of creation, you are in control. If you're in a state of reaction, you are out of control. And that is first and foremost, the biggest difference because that means you're starting your day in control or you are starting your day out of control. How your morning starts will carry through through the rest of your day. Yes, you could have something happen throughout the day that changes your mood, the game, whatever. But for the most part, however you start your morning, that's getting you in your energetic state, your energetic frequency. And if you can have a good state and have a good frequency and be high vibe, then it's going to be much easier for you to hold on to that high vibe. And when things happen that did not go as planned because we're humans on a duality planet, it's going to happen every day. You are able to look at that and not take it so seriously, not get frustrated, not freak out, not lose your shit. You're just going to be like, okay. And you can almost even laugh at it and say, all right, universe, that was funny. The whole, the whole idiom of when God makes plans or when you make plans, God laughs. That's what happens, right? We have to realize that we can't plan everything. We're only co-creators. But what we can do is plan to be in a good state and be in a high vibe and carry that throughout the day. And how we do that is by having a morning routine. And then whenever we feel ourselves shifting lower throughout the day, we use one of the principles from our morning routine to raise us back up. 
And this is something that just like everything with practice makes perfect. You're not gonna be amazing at it right away. Maybe you will be, but it's just not likely. And that's fine. I have great news for you. It takes 21 days to reprogram your mind. That's less than every single month that we have. You do not even have to do any of these and focus on them for even one whole month before you make them a habit. You will form a habit if you continue to do these over 21 days, guaranteed. It's just that you have to do them. And I know that it sounds so silly, but how many of us start something and then we're like, well, well that was fun. Five days in, we're like, meh, 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 meh. and then three months later, we're like, I feel like I'm worse off than I was before. What happens? You threw away all your tools, you stopped using them, you didn't create it as a habit so that it was a natural state for you to be in, and then you keep starting from square one. So let's not start from square one anymore. Let's build the foundation. All right, so now the first thing, the first thing that you wanna do is wake up and scrape your tongue and brush your teeth. So what ends up happening is you're going to be dehydrated when you wake up. And so you're going to want to drink something right away. That is natural. That's instinctual. What you need to realize though, is your tongue is releasing toxins throughout the night. And at that point, when you wake up in the morning, if you are drinking something right away without scraping your tongue, then you are going to be consuming the toxins and putting them back into your body after your body tried to release them. So make sure that you're using a tongue scraper or even doing it with your toothbrush. But honestly, tongue scrapers are like $10. Just get one. It's the best investment you'll ever make. Um, buy them for everyone for Christmas. Put them in their stockings. Truly, you need to scrape your tongue. Then you need to drink water. Do not, do not drink coffee first thing when you wake up. When you wake up, you are dehydrated. Coffee dehydrates you. You are literally making it worse and you're treating your body worse if you're drinking coffee first thing in the morning. That's not healthy. And if you feel like you need to drink coffee first thing in the morning, that is because you've programmed your brain to think that. So you need to unprogram your brain because you don't need it first thing in the morning. You're a human being. You're able to wake up and open your eyes and not need caffeine. No other, no other species on the planet drinks caffeine. We don't need it. We just like it. And we stress ourselves out too much and we burn ourselves out too much during the day. And then we rely on caffeine. We should instead be creating habits that are healthy so we don't have to rely on a substance that isn't that healthy for us. I'm not saying you have to cut coffee out altogether, but what I am saying is that coffee cannot be the first thing that you drink during the day. You need to drink water and a decent amount of water before you start drinking coffee. I would honestly recommend that you do your morning routine before you even drink coffee. Like when you finish your morning routine, make your coffee then. Um, all right, so now the other thing that it's so, so essential, and this is where I would argue 98% of humanity at this point goes wrong. They wake up and the first thing that they do is either look at their phone, stay on their phone, or go to their computer and start working. That is, the worst thing that you could do besides drinking coffee <laughs> right away. What happens is, and people don't realize this and I get it, but let's break it down. So when you were living, when we were living in a time when we didn't have homes, when we didn't have first world societies, when we had to forage and gather, so fight or flight was a reaction that kept us alive. And that reaction is biological. It did not go anywhere. But what happened was now that we have converted to modern times, that reaction now converts to your social media, your email, and your notifications. So if the first thing that you're doing in the morning is looking at your social media, your email, or your notifications, you are putting yourself into a state of fight or flight, 
first thing in the morning. I need you to hear that. First thing in the morning, you're putting yourself in fight or flight if you are picking up your phone right away or if you're picking up your computer right away. This is why it's so terrible. You are not creating anything for yourself and now you're putting yourself into a state where it's bad or bad and then you are comparing, you are judging, you are relying on other people to guide you throughout your day because you're having to respond to other people. If you feel like you need to wake up first thing in the morning and look at your phone or business is going to tank, you need to hire people because you're trying to do way too much work. No one on the planet, no one on the planet needs to wake up and look at their phone or their business will tank or they don't have a good business, or they don't have a team supporting them. You are not that important. <laughs> like no one is that important that they have to wake up and look at their phone right away. Get this in your head, honestly. Um, now, that, that, and that will be, honestly, that's something that you should really think about and integrate throughout your day as well. You should not have your email open. You shouldn't be looking at it. You shouldn't be waiting for the notifications and responding when each one comes because that means that you're not planning your day. You're letting other people plan your day for you. And that is how you will not be successful. So it's super important. All of these things are tying into your health and your success. And we all, we want our health to be high. We want our success to be high. Everyone should want both of those to be high. That is how you really thrive in the world. Um, now what you need to incorporate, regardless who you are, you have to meditate, you have to pray and you have to move your body. And then you either need to journal or journal your gratitudes or say out loud your gratitudes, but it's better to write them. <laughs> it's, it's always better to write them because you're taking a physical act and you're taking it out of your head and bringing it into the world, into a physical, tangible form. So what, what happens is meditation allows, or see, prayer allows you to speak to God universe. And then if you are only praying and asking for help and asking for help, but you're not meditating, then you're not giving yourself the space or the quiet to receive the information you're asking for and the help you're wanting. You have to meditate in order to get quiet, in order to really get the answers that you're seeking. In meditation, that's how you connect to your inner clarity and your inner purpose. Without meditation, you will feel like you are living in a state where you don't have purpose and you don't have clarity, you're going to feel overwhelmed and you're going to feel stuck. And that's a state that nobody wants to feel in because it makes you get super low and super low vibrational and it doesn't allow you to see the possibilities that are happening around you. Now, if you don't know how to meditate or if you're someone that tries to meditate and it doesn't go well, so then you end up stopping or you're just having a really hard time being consistent with it, then I highly recommend you sign up for a holistic well-being workshop. It's on sale right now for $111. That is my everything. It's 13 years of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health that I did on my own. And I am bringing it all to you. It's literally, I think like 95 pages when it's all typed out because it's so much information. That workshop, I make you, I make you meditate for 21 days. I make you make it a routine. And I set you up in a way where you can't miss it. You will start meditating. And I also teach you how. If you're not ready to dive into the whole HWW, then you can go to the morning mod, morning routine mod. I have that one. I took it out separately as you guys requested and I made it its own mod. So it's a lot um, it's, it's a lot less material and it's not as costly, but keep in mind that 
in Holistic Wellbeing Workshop, I give you module two, which is movement. So I give you all of the different ways to move your body. And then I also give you my movement hacks where I call it move like me. And these are things that I do throughout the day so that I'm staying in shape and I'm staying fit without having to really like crush it for an hour working out. It's not necessary. You can work your body by doing things and not having to do like a serious, serious workout for an hour every single day. And that's so much more effective and it's so much more sustainable and it fits into everyone's lives. Um, and all of the practices that I offer, which will tie into morning routines as well. So I would recommend, all, and all the programming, which is in Mod 5, I would recommend the whole workshop, but if you're really just trying to get your morning routine down, I'll teach you in there. Now, gratitude is essential because it shuts down your ego. And your ego is, oh, hold on a second. So what happens is it shuts down your ego because you're bringing your attention to what you're grateful for. And the ego is always going to go from what you, things you don't like and all of the bad things that are happening and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. That's the ego's job. That's literally its job. So that's why you have to train the ego and tell the ego you're not in control here. Um, and that's really, that's really how you start doing this is by focusing on what you're grateful for because you start to shift your brain to then appreciate what's going on in the current moment. And it really tells your subconscious mind that that's important. You get, you get into an abundant state by doing this and it raises your energetic vibration. Literally, gratitude on the scale of frequencies is one of the highest. Love, I think, is the very, very highest, but it's up there. So just realize that whenever you're doing something that's shifting your energy higher, that's going to make you feel better. It's going to make it so you have more energy to go throughout your day, to be more effective and to thrive. Now, the other part of that is movement. And I did mention this a little bit. Um, it's an entire module. It's module two in the Holistic Wellbeing Workshop. Um, this is literally so essential because this is how you align your mind, body, and spirit. If you're looking for movement ideas, I give you the movement ideas. I give you playlists and I give you my movement hacks um, within the module if you are interested. Now, so those are the things that doesn't matter who you are, you should be doing. You should be praying, meditating, doing your gratitudes and moving. Doesn't matter who you are, those four things are essential in your morning routine. Now, based on you and your life and all the other variables, these are the other things that you can incorporate. Um, so you can get outside, you can listen to podcasts, you can do breath work, you can listen to binaural beats, you can pull tarot cards, you can have a dance session, you can tell others how appreciative you are for them, and you can read books and you can ground in the earth. All of these things are going to allow you to connect with your energy, with your state. A dance session is the best way to get high vibe. Like just dance it out. If you're not feeling it, if you're really in the, if you wake up and you're just not in the best mood, have a dance session. It will absolutely get you into high vibes, matter of factly. Um, and it's important to be getting information, like high vibe information throughout the day. Don't turn on the news. Don't ever turn on the news, <laughs> especially in your morning routine. Do not, do not turn on the news. That is one surefire way to make it so you're not going to be in a high vibe state. The news is there to instill you in fear. It's not there to inform you. Now, it's also really important to understand if you don't have an effective nightly routine, you're setting yourself up for failure in the morning because 
if your nightly routine isn't effective, then how are you gonna be effective in the morning? You're gonna be having to pick up the slack for what you didn't do the night before, and you're not gonna be feeling that great. Whereas if you have a really effective nightly routine, you wake up in the morning, and then you're in such a better starting point than if you didn't do that. And that's why it really matters. Now, with the nightly routine, same same things. There's a lot of similarities in a morning routine and a nightly routine. And I know that that makes specifically Americans super frightened because we've never been taught any of this. We were taught that you can eat junk food, have everything as convenient as you want and watch as much television and have everything just come to you. And that is why America is so unhealthy mentally and physically. We're doing it wrong completely. So one thing, the most important thing, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not look at your phone for at least the last hour of every day. That also means don't answer your emails for the last hour of every day. This also means do not watch television for the la at least the last hour of the day, especially especially if you're someone who likes to watch horror and crime. Do not, do not watch that before you go to bed. Whatever you are focusing on last before you go to bed is what your subcon subconscious mind is going to focus on while you're sleeping. That means eight hours, eight hours that you're going to be thinking about murder and death and scary things that no one should be focusing on. I highly recommend if you're someone that watches all of that to stop. Like watching horror, watching crime, it's just like watching the news. It's just as bad. It's going, I mean, every once in a while, if you want to watch a horror film, okay, fine. But if you're watching horror and crime daily, it's going to mess with you mentally. Just think about how much death you're seeing. That is not natural for you to see that much death. It's just not. I remember when I, like when that was pointed out to me or when I had that revelation, I was like super obsessed with NCIS. I have not watched NCIS in probably a decade because I can't. I cannot watch something where someone is going to die on every single episode and they show a dead body in every single episode. I just can't. I love you, Gibbs. I'll always love you, Gibbs, but I need you to stop killing people. Well, you're not killing people, but I need your show to stop killing people and you to stop solving the murders. Can we just like have a show about Gibbs? That's my... That's me talking to NCIS there. Anyway, so like I get it, right? I grew up watching horror films. I had watched every horror film in the movie store when like you still rented movies, right? Like let's take it back. My cousin and I used to go rent them. Before the age of seven, when we were seven years old, I remember us going up to the movie teller and like they have a file of everything you've rented and saying, what horror films haven't we watched? And so it wasn't even the good ones. We watched every single one, like even the really, really terrible ones. Why? Why on earth would our parents let us do that? I will tell you that both of us had severe depression, severe anxiety, and were suicidal as teenagers. I'm not saying that that was the direct link, but I'm also not saying that that didn't have a role. Everything that you're consuming affects you. And what we don't realize, because we're consuming all the time, is it's all affecting you. So take a look at what you're consuming. Shut off all of the electronics before you go to bed at least an hour before. Another really, really important point is that it messes up your circadian rhythm if you're looking at electronics before you go to bed. Your circadian rhythm is you aligning with the universe. Uh, well, more specifically with Earth. This isn't even esoteric. This is very physical to Earth. And just think about it. When humans were first existing, before technology, before we got to live in a house, we would go to bed when it got dark and we would wake up when it got light. 
that is what we're supposed to be doing. We are not supposed to be staying up late and we're not supposed to be sleeping in late. It's counterintuitive to what our biological clock is saying. And if you're messing up your circadian rhythm, you're going to have mental, physical, and emotional issues. And understand that if you have mental, physical, and emotional issues or any issues here, you will not be able to have a spiritual, like it, it's not there. The mind, body, soul, if you're not working on mind, body, mood, your soul, you won't be able to work on that because you will be so distracted with trying to work on your physical health or mental health or emotional health. You will not be able to have the luxury of flowing with the universe, of connecting, for being able to pray and meditate and really get into it. Your body won't be feeling good. You won't be able to have the spiritual relationship that we all need to have. Because I don't care what religion you come from or if you don't believe in a religion, I actually prefer that. I prefer that you don't believe in Christianity, Christianity and Catholicism, actually, just because there's so many limiting beliefs and fear-based programmings in that teaching that you just have so much more work to do to understand how you need to be healthy and happy in in this physicality, in this form. And I'm not, I'm not hating on you if that's how you grew up, that's how I grew up as well. And that is why I have issues with it because I have seen how unhealthy. And can we just talk about all the wars and all the killing that's happened from Christianity? Like, come on now, come on now. And humans are humans. If you're trying to say that like, we're not gonna go on that tangent anyway. Um, all right. So you have to put your phone down. You have to put your phone down. You have to turn the electronics off. Um, so what does that mean? That also means do not sleep with your television on. You are programming your brain when you're sleeping. So anything you're listening to, anything you're hearing is programming it. You should be sleeping in silence. If you are someone who's unable to sleep in silence, TV is, is not even an option. It's not even your last resort. It's not an option. Do not put your TV on while you sleep. Do not allow your children to have TVs on when they sleep. It is so unhealthy for them. Um, and it gets them used to thinking that they need to have noise and then that's going to make them an unhealthy adult. So if you're a parent, set your children up for success. Don't set them up for things that they have to work out on their own when they're older. They're going to have enough of that. <laughs> like everyone will have enough of that. Um, things that you can do, listen to affirmations throughout the night, listen to binaural beats, or listen to a soundscape, nature sounds, something like that, so it's at least going to be high vibrational. Um, if you are listening to binaural beats, please just be mindful of the frequency that you're listening to. You don't want to listen to one that's going to keep you awake. So just be mindful of that, um, the whole brain state thing theta, alpha, all that. If you're unsure and you want to know more, that is within HWW. Um, so you can join that. Also, going to sleep early is super important. Besides the whole circadian rhythm thing, if you go to sleep after midnight, you're not getting... The, the sleep that you get before midnight is so much more effective for you. You get so much more out of your sleep before midnight. So after midnight, you're not getting as much. If you're only ever going to sleep after midnight, then you're not getting quality sleep. Or if you're going to bed at 11, you're only getting one hour of quality sleep, really. So you should really, really be going to bed between, honestly, like 8 and 10 p.m. 10 p.m. is really, truly the latest that you should be going to sleep. Um, again, everyone's different. You might work late, but still, you should really aim to go to sleep by 10. And also, your sleeping schedule shouldn't change based on whether it's the weekend or not. That is something that, like, I feel like no Americans <laughs> actually follow through with. And maybe other countries are like this as well. But I feel like Americans live for the weekend. And then on the weekend, it's like, let's binge watch TV and sit in our pajamas and let's sleep in late and stay up late and let's drink a lot of alcohol. And it's like, no, no, don't do that. You're supposed to be waking up at the same time every day, around the same time. And you're supposed to be going to sleep around the same time every day. Crazy, I know. 
granted, like you can have changes, you can fluctuate, but if you're setting yourself up for success, these are the things that you are doing. Um, now, the last thing that you need to focus on, or, no, no, that's what I said. Oh, already went on that tangent. <laughs> also, make sure you don't eat three hours before you go to bed. If you're trying to sleep, you want your body concentrating on sleeping. If you eat three hours before bed, then within three hours before bed, then your body is going to be digesting food while you sleep. So you won't get as good of sleep because your body is going to be focusing on digesting, which is not what you want. And that's also when you'll have disruptive sleep. You won't be able to sleep as well. You'll wake up throughout the night. Um, as I say all this, I just want to mention, I sleep eight hours, eight hours minimally every single night. And I don't wake up. I don't wake up. I had insomnia my whole life growing up, my whole life. I did not think that I was someone that could sleep at night. Why? Because I had terrible habits. I, nobody, nobody told me how to live, okay? I don't understand why the previous generations were so out of touch with reality and out of touch with health and out of touch with well-being that they set us all up to have really terrible depression and anxiety and really terrible sleep schedules just because we just weren't educated the right way. Our schooling system isn't teaching us what we need to know. Um, so I just want to mention that because I know that there's people that will say, oh, well, how much sleep does she get? Or she's saying all of this, but I mean, does she really sleep at night? Or, oh, she's always been someone that sleeps eight hours at night. No, let's give you it all for and just so you understand when that's saying that like when your brain's saying that when you're verbally saying that that's a limiting belief that's you not wanting to change um you should always want to change because change is growth and growth is how you better yourself um also make sure that you incorporate a skincare routine, cleanse your face along with brushing and floss flossing. Physical hygiene is linked to mental hygiene. You need to make sure that you're doing both of these things. Um, so that's everything I just said right there. That's every human being on the planet. No ifs, ands, or buts. Every single one of you. Now these are things that you can include based on the variables. You can journal, you can script, Scripting, if you don't know, means that you decide what's happening in your life. And scripting is you telling the story of where you want to be, what it's going to look like, how you want to feel. And you do that before bed. It's so effective because you are envisioning how you want your life to be. You're not thinking about how the external world is. You're deciding and you're getting your energy behind what you want to create in the world. It is so, so effective. I'll talk about this deeper. Um, this will be something we talk about for sure in Blissed Out Society, which is opening so soon. These videos will be in Blissed Out Society, um, but I just wanted to give you guys a little taste of what you'll be getting in there. Um, you can also read and recite affirmations. This is also really powerful because again, whatever you're thinking about before you go to bed is what your brain's going to think about. So if you're thinking about positive affirmations, if you're scripting the life that you want, your brain is going to be focusing on the life that you want for the next eight hours. How cool is that? It's going to be doing a lot of heavy lifting for you at night because you're setting yourself up for success in your sleep. Did you know you could do that? Because you can do that. You could also set yourself up for failure in your sleep. Watching horror movies. <laughs> um, so quantum leaping, this is all, this is you, quantum leaping is, it goes with quantum physics. When you decide who you want to be, and instead of seeing that person in 10 years, you pull it to the now and you decide this is who I am now. It's basically you changing your identity so that, time which doesn't exist which is what a lot of people let stand in their way of the things that they want collapses this is something that I teach um it's called time techniques and it's a part of NLP so I'm trained in that and honestly time techniques is super effective but when you break it down it's in essence you quantum leaping 
and you erasing all of the limiting beliefs. I find that people really need time techniques when they are the people that reinforce their limiting beliefs. That's when you would you would more so want to do time techniques because it's almost like in a state of hypnosis. So it makes it easier for you to move back and forth on the timeline. If that is way too quantum physics for you, then that's fine. You don't have to absorb that, but I will tell you that that is how you'll change your life. It's the most effective way to change your life. We'll talk about that more as well. And then envisioning your future, that goes along with scripting. Um, planning your day for tomorrow, that goes along with the fact that if you plan your day, then you're not letting others control your day. You're deciding, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing it. So if you get 15 notifications from your email and from people that want something from you before then, you don't listen to them. You don't react 15 times. You have a set time where you respond to these people. And if it's an emergency or if it's something, a project that you're working on, then of course, like they will be factored in. If not, then it's not an emergency. You need to decide when you're going to be checking these things, when you're going to be connecting with these people. One thing that I tell everyone is your phone is for you. It is not for everyone else. Just because someone wants to call you and talk to you doesn't mean that you need to answer and talk to them. You have a very, you should have a very set day. You should allow for things to happen and change, but you should not let anyone derail your day. If you're going to pick up the phone and that person's going to keep you on the phone for an hour when you're trying to film a video and then when that hour is done, you're now going to have to redo your makeup and then you've lost lighting and now you can't film, that's going to be a problem. You can't do that. You need to have people in your life that respect your boundaries. Perfect example. The other day, my friend came over. One of my oldest friends came over with her child and she said, can I come over? And it was like an emergency situation. And I said very clearly, I am just about to film a YouTube video. You can pop in quickly if you need to. It was a very, very dire situation and she needed to bring her baby here. So that is, that's the only reason why I even answered. But I'll tell you, she and her baby were here for 10 hours and her baby was destroying my apartment. I had to take everything off of my tables. He was breaking everything. He was screaming and crying while I was on phone calls for work. She was letting him scream while she was just on her phone. That's unacceptable. I wasn't able to do anything. I got no work done that day. And I had a full face of makeup on because I was literally just about to record. Do you know what? That person's not in my life anymore. You didn't respect my boundaries. You were not respectful of my place when you got here. You were not respectful. And you weren't being a good mother, honestly. So I gave you a chance because you needed to get out. But you also had, you also have to realize that I have, a, I have a life and I have things that I need to do. And if you're not respecting that, then that's somebody that shouldn't be in your life. So that's just a prime example where you have to have boundaries. And if the people in your life don't respect your boundaries, then that's not on you, that's on them. And you can cut them out and then they should realize what they did, long, what they did wrong. And if they wanna be in your life, then they're going to work on themselves more and they're going to realize that respecting boundaries is a healthy thing putting up boundaries is a healthy thing um all right okay and then you can also diffuse essential oils you can listen to calming music you can drink water and you can take cbd taking cbd is super effective if you have problems sleeping it will help you sleep um i highly 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 recommend cbd for so many reasons that will be a, a different a different video. Um, things that you absolutely, absolutely need to include are meditation, prayer, and reading a book. We don't read enough, and reading is so good for your mind, your body, and your spirit. Meditation and prayer, you should be doing them. They shouldn't be something that you're running away from. They should be something that you sprinkle throughout your day. Honestly, you should be praying. I pray 
so many times during the day, I couldn't even tell you. I meditate at least three times during the day. I'm not saying I'm meditating for an hour, but I meditate a lot and I practice mindfulness all day long. Um, yeah, all right, we did that, we did that, we did that. I feel like I've been on here forever, guys. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Is there anything I didn't go over? Okay, so just remember, it takes 21 days to form a habit. Once you do this for 21 days, it becomes your nature. So just get yourself in the habit of doing this for 21 days, and then it becomes easy for you. It's not gonna be hard or difficult. Every successful person in the world practices self-discipline. Every unsuccessful, I knew I missed something there. Let me rephrase that. Every successful and healthy person in the world practices self-discipline. Every unsuccessful and unhealthy person in the world lacks self-discipline. You have to decide which side of that coin you're going to fall on. Um, all right, that's all I have for you. If you wanna go deeper in this, this is what I teach in every aspect. I do this in my coaching. This is how I set you up for success, for health, for wealth. <laughs> this it's all it's all tied together. My coaching program is on sale for giving back. I'm giving back to the community. It's Give Back Tuesday. Let's do it. My whole website's on sale. Honestly, <laughs> everything's on sale. Sale, 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 sale. <laughs> so. You can sign up for coaching if you really, really want to do this work. I help you. You have access to me throughout the day if I'm coaching you. So if you really, really are serious about doing the work, if you're serious about the transformations, sign up for my coaching because you're going to have a weekly video session with me and then you get access to me all day long. So if you are struggling throughout the day and that's what often happens, right? Like you get on the call with somebody and you're like, all right, these are all the things I want to talk about. And then you start living throughout your day and you're like, Darn it, I didn't, I didn't ask her about this, or I didn't ask him about this, or I need help with this, and I didn't even realize to say it. When you think about it in that moment when you're realizing you need help, that's when you can reach out to me, and I got you. I always got you. Um, so yeah, all, all of this is primarily, all of it, all of this is within the Holistic Wellbeing Workshop. That's my pride and joy, y'all, my pride and joy. I am so, 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 so blessed that I can teach you this because I don't want you to suffer for 13 years like I did. I want you to have the tangible tips that make effective changes in your life so your health and your wealth are always going to be abundant. That's as simple as that. I love you all so, so, so much. Also, this is Who Does My Tattoos? If you are in the area and you want tattoos, go see Jonathan Abbott. He's the best. And on that note, I love you so much. If you have any questions, DM me. If you would like to work with me, let's get it on. Ghosties had enough too. She's like, all right, Ma, we got to go. <laughs> okay, I love you. I love you. I love you. Be well. Have the best night. Go implement your nightly routine. Let me know how it goes. Okay, bye. <laughs>